If you're like most churches, you want to reach as many people as you possibly can anywhere that you possibly can. We've got this vast digital mission field out there. But the question is, which social media platform should we be on? That's a huge, huge question. There are so many out there. Which one's best for what? That's what we're going to talk about today. Hey guys, welcome to another exciting, thrill-packed, action-featured, um, really awesome and uh, wholly informative episode of the Church Media Guys show. My name is Dave Curley. We've not met. I am the founder of ChurchTrainingAcademy.com, which is a place where you and I and other ministry-minded people can come together and learn how to use and exploit media and technology, social media, websites, podcasting, all that kind of stuff, so that we can take the message to the world, both inside our church physically and then outside our church. With me, as always, is my partner in crime, Justin Nava. Good morning, Justin. Uh, <laughs> oh. oh, man, I am so awake right now. How's it going, guys? <laughs> live stream. Uh, everyone watching live. Dave, uh, I'm just trying to see if I can make Dave yawn here. I'm just, I am not. I, I will not, not yawn. Been... Oh, crap. Here it comes. <laughs> Oh, yes. <laughs> Dang it. There it is. If you're Dang listening it. to the audio, I finally got Dave to do a little yawn. Dang uh, it. I'm excited for today. Um, we got Ryan in the live chat here. He said, the pro tip for today is a thorn in my side. Definitely need some tips with it. And yes, it is how to recruit the best volunteers that stick around. So if you're listening to the podcast, you're about to get that right now. If you're watching this on YouTube, it'll be a separate video. Uh, I specifically chose this one because so many people are having this issue, Dave. So I was like, yeah. I'm commandeering the pro tip today. We're talking about how to recruit the best volunteers that stick around. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Volunteers are are a, um, it, it's interesting. They're like a mixed blessing. They're, it's it's a it's a bittersweet thing. You know, there's like this, this complete dichotomy with volunteers. We can't do any of our stuff without help and without volunteers. Um, but then you have the volunteers that are are the hey I really want to help okay great um, you know can you uh, can you do this well I'm gonna be kind of can you, well can you uh, can you help out over here well actually you know I really need to you know <laughs> and then they go back to their pew <laughs> it's like, yep dang it you know and then you got the volunteers that are they're like hey I'd like to help and then they come in with these gigantic lists of everything that needs to change <laughs> I'm I'm that's, one I'm that's one of exactly those what we're talking about. <laughs> And now for our feature presentation. Marcus Kyler is a husband, he's a father, he's a pastor, he's an author, and he wants to be your digital pastor. And he's hanging out with us today on the Church Media Guys show. Marcus, thanks, man, for coming and spending a part of your very valuable time with the Church Media Guys. How you doing? Um, I'm doing well. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Justin, for uh, having me on this evening. It's a great honor. We are glad to have you here. It's uh, it, it's always cool to to talk to folks that are uh, kind of in our space that are doing things, especially in social media. Because I mean, we we get questions all the time regarding social media, various platforms. Should I do this? Should I do that? Should we be here? Should we be there? And uh, and 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 I know you've got some fantastic insights on all that. And so before we get into that, though, before we get into that, I want our audience to get to know you on a much more deeper and more intimate level. I think it I think it's really important that we uh, explore some, some of the depths of your soul. So I'm going to ask you a handful of questions here, like really rapid fire. And uh, I want you to be honest. Pretend, pretend you know, you're like laying on the sofa there in my office, you know, and, and old Doc Dave's probing your brain, okay? Very good. Very All good. right, let's, let's, let's start off with the most important one ever, Coke or Pepsi? Woo, um, I haven't, um, no, I, I, live in, I live in Michigan, so we call it pop. Oh, All right, just, sorry. Just to preface that, I haven't had pop since I was um, since I was in high school. Wow! Um, but um, at, at that time, it was definitely Coke. Okay, okay, good, good. Okay, so you're saved. Okay, that's good. <laughs> All right, so that's good. All right, so coffee or tea? Um, tea. Uh, another shocker. I hate coffee. You hate coffee, but you spend all your time in a Starbucks working. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, it makes no out. sense. It makes yeah, no sense, but th that's the guy's honest truth. Yeah. Well, and then they have good tea over there, of course. I, I understand that. All right. Here's this is this is the one that determines where you will be spending eternity and how many crowns you're going to get. Star Wars or Star Trek? 
ah, Star Wars. Oh, good. Yes. Star Wars. All right. oh. Good. He's, so, you know, <laughs> he said that because he's sitting there looking at my background. He's looking at all the stuff on my shelves and he's like, I got to say Star Wars. Oh, I, you know what? I, I wasn't even looking at that. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, um, I'm curious. Um, Justin and I have, um, we, we've got, we, we've got our, our CTA insiders, Church Training Academy insiders, um, and they're, most of them are on Facebook and they're, that's where they're doing their live streaming and all that too. But we've also got a lot of people in our church media hacks group. And a lot of them are wondering which platform should they focus on for ministry? And I know that's a really loaded question because both of us, Justin and I, the first question we ask is, well, what aspect of your ministry and all that? I mean, do you, does a church really need to be on all platforms and try to be everywhere they can? Um, I, I, I definitely understand the, um, the, the necessity of really focusing uh, on a single platform. And I understand the benefit of, uh, of focusing on a single platform. Now, um, in, in the consulting that I do, when I'm, um, excuse me, when I'm offering uh, my services, I, I do offer to, you know, manage you know, multiple platforms um, at one time, d- d- depending on what they want to do, uh, it will determine my level of management of a, of a particular platform. Um, I, I kind of go with the big four, uh, it, it, as I personally like to call it, which is uh, Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter, and uh, YouTube. I, um, I, I do offer uh, all of those services, and I think it's important, um, I think it's important to uh, have a presence on all of them. It's not required to have a presence on all of them, but that's uh, what I offer when I, uh, w- when I pitch my services uh, to churches. Now, when you're talking about focusing on one platform, I mean, obviously the, fo- the focus, the focal platform is obviously uh, Facebook because that's where everybody is. But um, I-, I feel so strongly about Instagram that, uh, and-, and, I- and I'm going to say this, I'm going to say this using the, the-, the language that-, that you, Justin, uh, gave to me when you were asking me to, uh, to, to join you all uh, today. Um, when is it right to move to a second platform? And uh, my answer to the question is immediately. <laughs> and I say that because I'm, I feel so strongly about Instagram that I, I feel that I, I move it up from a, a nice to have to a must have right along with Facebook. I mean, f- Facebook, you got to have it for, for obvious reasons. But I, I just feel that there's so many different opportunities within Instagram to, to communicate and to really find your voice within that platform that I think is almost necessary to, to, to really be on there as well uh, to, to the best of your ability uh, as a ministry as far as uh, how you uh, spread your resources. I like to say uh, that, that Instagram is, is, is actually every platform in one. I mean, you have you you have your Facebook uh, aspects of Instagram because because of course, obviously, uh, you know, it's owned by Facebook. But then you also have um, your 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 YouTube aspect of it because uh, of of uh, the, the video aspect of it. Then you also have uh, you also have Twitter elements in there, and the fact that now you can communicate uh, with words uh, as far as uh, what you do with your your Instagram stories. And the Instagram stories, of course, is uh, is uh, from Snapchat, and so you really it's really every platform uh, in one. And so when you want to communicate, I mean, you have so many different ways to do it. If you're using Instagram proper uh, and, and you're just posting uh, pictures, or you know, you're posting uh, you know one minute videos or, or less in your feed, you know, you're, you're using uh, Instagram stories. You can use Instagram Live, of course, but then you also you know, with the IGTV now, that's another opportunity uh, for, you know, ministries to, to, to go in there and to put, um, you know, either repurposed content or uh, uh, produced, you know, uh, original content and, and have that be another way in, in, in order to, uh, you know, share your message or in, in another way to uh, engage as well. And then, and then finally, on top of that, there are uh, the, the, the group chat uh, feature that uh, that they just introduced, I guess, um, uh, this past week or, or was it last week? I guess I you can. Yeah, it was like last you know, week or two weeks ago. Yeah, you can you can have up to what four people and and you can uh, you can chat with them on video as you're still using uh, Instagram, and so that just adds another element of um, of of how you can communicate with your people, and I think it's just um it, it's an incredible platform, you know, for for that reason because it just gives you so many looks. 
you know, and so many opportunities that um, I don't believe the other platforms do. And so for that reason, um, I, I think, uh, you know, you, you, you got to try to use both of them, uh, if at all possible. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, you're the first person to actually specifically say that I've heard you need to be on Facebook and now you need to be on Instagram. And I, and I, I've kind of, it's one of those things where I've kind of known this, uh, that you're saying, you know, it really is all the platforms. You have the imagery of Facebook, you have the text of Facebook and Twitter, you have the hashtagging of Twitter, you have the messaging of Snapchat, the video options of YouTube. I mean, it really is kind of the all in one. I can see why it's coming up so much. So um, I think where I, where I, what I'd like to ask, and me and Dave can trade it off here, um, maybe we can ask specifically, I think we're all, we're mostly on Facebook. There's still some churches that are not on Facebook, uh, but we'll, we'll get to those in, this, in maybe first. But um, let's say we're on Facebook, we're using it, we're posting three, five times a week, and now we want to get on Instagram. And then I want to ask you too, when do we know or what should we be prepared for when going on Twitter and YouTube as a, a third and fourth platform? So let's go back to Instagram and let's, let's go high level view here. Um, when, when, when our church volunteers, church media volunteers have got Facebook down and now we're going to add Instagram like you recommend, what should we be pre preparing for? What kinds of posts, uh, what kind of frequency, what kind of engagement? Um, how can we best prepare for that? As far as that new platform, what are the top like three things that we need to know when moving to Instagram for the first time? I think, uh, I think with the changes that that happened to, uh, and, and necessary changes that happened uh, over on Facebook uh, earlier this year, it, it really became necessary for uh, churches if you want to be successful to to to, uh, of course, post in a way that invites more conversation and, and, and really builds community uh, more that way. Uh, I, I think that some of the, uh, some of the tactics that in the past that we tried to use on Facebook uh, and, and some of the posts that we did on there uh, are not quite as successful anymore, uh, but they can be more successful um, on Instagram. Uh, really the main thing that I would say to, uh, you know, that you really wanna ask yourself and really want to ask your volunteer team or, 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 or staff or whoever is, is working on this is, um, you know, what is, what is your core message? You know, what kinds of nuggets you can pull out of a message uh, each and every week? Because, you know, the, the cornerstone, uh, I believe, especially with uh, Instagram and how you can still uh, post and, and, and gain traction on that is, you know, really understanding um, you know, the different ways that you can repurpose a sermon and, and just really being able to understand um, how you can use the sermon and, and how many different kinds of posts that you can get out of that and, and how those different kinds of posts um, relate to the overall message of your ministry that you're trying to uh, convey uh, each and every week. So I think that's pretty much the main thing that you uh, want to uh, you know, be ready for as you transition uh, over to that platform. Uh, I, I think the second thing as, as well is um, we're, we, we're all familiar with um, uh, Brady Shear, uh, Pro, Church to, uh, Pro Church Tools, uh, Pro Church Daily. That's um, part of my daily routine, actually, is, is watching Pro Church Daily uh, in the morning. Mm -hmm. And um, and, and the whole one, uh, seizing the 167 concept uh, that, that, that he talks about and that is part of the uh, Pro Church Tools uh, brand, uh, I really think that that's a mentality that we have to use as, um, as, a, as ministries in, in, in order to uh, figure out, okay, when we move to a platform, how are we seizing the 167 uh, with that particular platform and um, really assessing um, how comfortable a pastor or senior leader is with uh, communicating uh, more intimate, more intimately with people outside of just the, the, the sermon uh, outside of just uh, on a Sunday or, or, or the weekend. Uh, now what I mean by that is, you know, th there are a lot of opportunities that, that a pastor has to, you know, c communicate uh, with people you know, throughout the week, whether that's, um, you know, you can do, um, a daily or, you know, twice weekly or, 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 you know, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you know, prayer time that you can actually get on, you know, Instagram live and, you know, just really invite people to come in and, and, and share. They can drop their prayer requests in, or maybe you have a devotion that, that, um, 
you know, that you want to talk about for 10 minutes and something like that, or, and, and do a Q and a after that, or, uh, or, or you just want to, you just want to get on to say hi or something like that. Those are different. Those are touch points, uh, that Instagram allows you to do, uh, you know, throughout the week. And, um, you know, and, uh, yeah. what, when you talk about those touch points, that's, that's something that Justin and I have, have talked a lot about, uh, with our, our viewers is that, uh, as, the 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 larger your church gets as your church gets bigger the distance between the pulpit and the congregation gets farther because there's just physically more people that the pastor cannot go and have lunch with on sunday after church or go over to you know a fellowship at this home group's house or at this home group's house you know there's just you know the 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 lead pastor the teaching pastor i mean the 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 heads of the of the organization of the body um, get further and further removed just because of the sheer mass of people that are there. And, and I think it's critical that they use the tools and that's, I didn't even think about doing, you know, sort of a, an Instagram live prayer time because uh, now I'm still learning all the, the Instagram stuff. I've been a, I've been a Twitter guy since it, it first came out uh, and I enjoy Instagram, but I haven't delved so deep, deep into the video aspects and especially not the live. I'm, I'm still a, um, if it's not going to last, you know, I'm not going to mess with it, you know, unless I'm just trying to communicate directly with somebody by sending them a quick video or something. Right. Um, but the Instagram live stuff goes away 24 hours, right? Or, right. It, or, or is it just there for the time that it's happening? No, the, 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 uh, the Instagram live, it stays, uh, for 24 hours. Now, okay. when, they first, when, when, when they first introduced it, uh, it went away immediately, right. I think it took maybe two or three weeks to get it to where uh, right. it was integrated into your stories. And that as, along with your stories lasts, uh, 24 hours. Well, now, see, and that's, I think, I think that's pretty cool because that, that keeps some of that intimacy there that you can jump on if your pastor is doing this and you can say, Hey, um, you know, uh, we're having this, this problem in our family and I don't want to go into any of the details, but we're struggling right now. And then the pastor prays and the 24 hours that's, that's gone. And you don't have to worry about, you know, Oh, the curlies are having problems, you know, and all this kind of stuff happen. You know what I'm saying? You can, you can still have some of that one-to-one almost intimacy or the, the feeling of that one-to-one intimacy, um, as much as you can through a, a device, um, and, uh, and, and still be kind of secure too. So I, I think that's cool. Where, where do you see Twitter? fitting in with this in the context of a, um, uh, of a church, of a church body. And, and the reason I ask, Twitter's been around for a long time, um, and the, the adoption rate at certain levels is really high, but I see Twitter now almost like, a, um, like an open fire hydrant, and I just, I'm tired of it. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't want to sit there and, and just try to find one nugget out of all the the stuff and out there. And, and I'm not sure that the average person is savvy enough to sit there and go through the time it takes to set up filters and to set up hashtags that they're following and this and that and, and you know, fine tune it and fine tune it and fine tune it and fine tune it and fine tune it so that it actually works for you and it's not a distraction. And all that. Where, where do you see it fitting in, in ministry? Um, yeah, I, I, um, I think that in, in one re- and you're and you're absolutely right um, about Twitter and and you know the open fire holes and everything. Um, I think the reason why I still recommend uh, you know churches be on there is just because if you look at all the the, the social networks, um, Twitter is the most direct as far as how you can reach somebody online. <laughs> it, it's the most direct way that you can that, that, that you can reach somebody and uh, it, it just provides it just provides that easy access because I mean if you look at the other networks at least you have to you, you have to you have to send a DM and that direct message may or may not uh, get to uh, that ministry it can be accepted it can be declined you know but but Twitter at least you can you, you can you, you can put an at mention right there and boom it's there. Now, wh- whether it gets responded to or not, uh, it, it is something that is there. Uh, now, I don't necessarily see uh, 
Twitter functioning for for ministries the same way that it functions for um, for brands or or or, uh, or you know retail stores that uh, people typically use Twitter now as the um, uh, customer service engine for you know how they communicate with with, with the uh, different places that they that they shop or the different brands that they like or whatever. Um, I don't see too many people using it as that, but the the opportunity is there. You know, if uh, somebody needed to reach a church, um, a, a ministry directly, uh, <laughs> Twitter is there. So yeah. Just, just for at First Baptist church, church, somebody was sitting in my pew. <laughs> 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 what what do you do is, about it? <laughs> your feedback is very important to us. Please send us a DM, and we'll talk about this further. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, hey. I, I, th- that sounds good to me. That's, that's a perfect answer. If you ask me. <laughs> um, yeah. I like what you said. You know, it's, it's open access. It's easy access. Someone that we all follow Gary Vaynerchuk put it this way. And I, and I love the way he put it is, is Twitter is, is the, is, is the, uh, what did he call it? He said, Twitter is the open club. Um, yeah. where you can just walk up to somebody and just start talking to them. You know, like everyone's doing their own thing. You got your little groups of people over here, dancing over there, hanging out over here. And you can just walk up and just say, Hey guys, what's going on? Oh yeah. Tigers love tigers. And you can literally just jump into any conversation. And, and like you yeah. said, tag people or, or search for hashtags and filters and all that stuff. You can get pretty, pretty detailed, but, um, yeah, that's one thing, man, we tried to, I tried so hard to make Twitter work for our church. Uh, but it just, it just, it, it was the same. It really became the same four people that were interacting with our Twitter and they were already interacting elsewhere. Um, but <clears throat> I do see that as, as an opportunity. If you are in a bigger area, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, um, where your church can, you know, promote local events, services. Hey guys, we're going to be here. Um, you know, you can put stuff out there. You can search the local area, hashtag, Houston food, you know, and find people talking about food in Houston and be like, Hey, we're having a barbecue this Sunday. We'd like to have you come try our barbecue too. You know, kind of thing where you have that instant access. Right. And like you said, it's not like Instagram where you're kind of, they're going to block you for DMing too much, you know, or for spamming But Twitter. It's, it's out there. It's there. And you know, if you uh, comment or reply back to someone's tweet, all their followers see it. Um, so I like that, that what you said, it's kind of like open, easy access. Um, do you have like a posting recommendation to, or maybe you should just tell me if mine's good enough. Um, I recommend if church is going to be on Twitter, they need to post three to five times a day. Um, because the average life of a tweet is about 30 minutes. So unless you're relevant for an hour and a half of the day, it's probably not worth your time. Um, would, would you agree with that? Or do you have any other posting strategies for Twitter? Uh, I, I would absolutely agree with that. And, uh, I, I think Twitter, I think, um, three to five minutes, Goodness gracious! Uh, three to five tweets uh, per day um, is is definitely um, is definitely good. If um, it, I, w- I would say if you could ramp that up and and not and and and, and actually the three to five tweets uh, per day is good. And um, if if it's possible to maybe even double that, I would just with. Um, you know, retweets from, like you were saying, local areas or, 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 or if um, local businesses or, or have uh, uh, articles or whatever, or, or, or things that matter to your ministry, uh, kind of use those, those other tweets uh, to, to kind of, you know, promote, you know, what other people are doing to uh, uh, show that you're involved uh, in the community as well as just, you know, being a, a ministry that happens to be in the community as well. So, um, you know, so, so, you know, having, having that three to five original and then, you know, three to five uh, retweets and things of that nature, I think, um, I think is really, really solid. And, 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 w- and what I think it does is, um, you know, it, it keeps you relevant and it keeps you present on Twitter, uh, you know, just in case, uh, you know, just in case it becomes somewhat of a, a, a bigger platform for you. Uh, I, I kind of, um, and, and I've never, I've naturally never said this to anybody. It's just been in my head, but I kind of think of Twitter and, and maintaining a presence on Twitter. Like if you, um, you know, if you have a place that you want to, uh, uh, rent out as an Airbnb, you know, you, you want to keep the place clean. You want to keep it maintained. You know, you want to make sure, you know, everything is fine. So it's like, you can't neglect it and you can't 
uh, you, you know, you, you have to make sure, you know, things are in there. You have to make sure, you know, the refrigerator is stocked and, and that the, everything that's in that refrigerator is fresh. And, and you just have to make sure that, that, um, that, that all the plumbing and everything like that is working properly, even though that property, you know, you, you might not necessarily live there, but it, it but it's something that you need to uh, actively maintain and make sure that if somebody does, want to uh, go there, if somebody does want to, 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 to pay you to uh, live there for a few days, that you're ready and able to do that and, and, and in a way that is going to be enjoyed. And so that's kind of the way I look at uh, a church maintaining a Twitter presence. So, so because of that, I don't think that uh, it, it doesn't take a lot of work to be on Twitter. And it doesn't take a lot of work to, 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 to really maintain that. And so you can have a, a, a volunteer uh, on your team um, to, you know, you, that can be done with like one volunteer on your team. And, and that can be uh, something that, that, that can be done uh, without, uh, you know, a lot of resources. And yeah, so, yeah, without, without too much struggle. You know, what you were talking about, um, uh, retweeting and uh, keeping, uh, you know, basically providing information for the community or about your community and stuff. Again, that's one of the themes that Justin and I've been talking about for the last couple of months with, with our our uh, viewers is that um, the church largely, the church used to be a, a, a focal point of the community, of any given neighborhood, any given community um, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years ago. Um, you know, the, the, the church was, was a hub, and now the church is a passing thought. And it, it's important that the church establish and reestablish itself as a member of the community and a resource for the community on several different levels, not just a spiritual level, but a social level, a cultural level, uh, a relational and emotional level, right? And um, yeah. that we, we've, we've talked about strategies on how to do that and stuff, but I, I think throwing that piece in there that, um, uh, that, that using Twitter, people are going to come across it that may not even be in your church, it may just be in the area and be looking for things that are happening in, you know, Dallas, you know, and if you're part of the ones that are feeding that information and answering the question that they have um, through Twitter, then you're making the church a relevant source for them and stuff. And that just that that brings the authority overall of that body of believers, that location um, as a hub for the community. I think it's very important. So that's I hadn't even thought about it that way in regards to Twitter. So thanks for sharing that. Absolutely. Can I say? Can I say one more thing, real quick? Please. Uh, with, with the with the, uh, with the retweeting, um, you know, you can you can actually insert your brand into the retweet. Like, if you retweet with a comment, like most of the time uh, on my personal account, I probably nine out of every ten times that I retweet something, I will retweet with a comment instead of just like the the, the standard generic retweet. And you know, I always say something because I think it's always better to say something. You know. Uh, when you're retweeting, uh, if, uh, if appropriate. And so, um, a church can do that as well. You know, if, if, a, if a church retweets something and makes a comment, you know, then you can put, you know, whatever, uh, you know, core branding hashtag you use for your ministry, uh, you know, on top of that retweet. And then, you know, that, that, that even makes you uh, more relevant to the conversation and more indexable to, uh, to what's taking place. Right. And, and, and adding that comment is, means that you're not just blindly retweeting things. There's actually some thought into this and it shows that you're curating this information, speaking on this information and now sharing it. So I, I think, again, building authority, I think that's, that's, that's key. Oh yeah. Yeah. So uh, in the, we're going to wrap up here in the next few minutes. So Marcus, I'm going to do a little bit of a rapid fire here. And so I'm just going to list off the remaining social media platforms. Give me your take on churches moving to that platform. Uh, let's say 30 seconds or less, if you can. Are you ready? Okay. YouTube. What, what do we need to know to move to YouTube for the, for the very first time? Um, no. what, is, what, is your, what is your content strategy as far as, um, you know, how you want to share, um, you know, your uh, sermon content? Some, pe- some of the churches that I work with still will uh, have copies of their messages available for purchase. Uh, after services, everybody doesn't make uh, their their sermons free. Some people do. A lot of people uh, don't. And so if you're going to do that on YouTube, then you just want to know, um, you know, do you want to share the entire message? Or do you want to share uh, an excerpt of the message? 
um, you know, what kind of excerpt do you want to, uh, you want to show? Um, and then also you want to be prepared to, uh, you know, add a little extra content. Maybe, uh, if you want to have, uh, an original show kind of, kind of the same in the same vein as you would use with a, uh, with an Instagram live or something like that, you can do, you know, a Q and a, or you can do a, a, a once a week kind of session or whatever with the, with, with the senior leader uh, on YouTube, as far as, you know, just, just, uh, really deciding how you want to handle, uh, your content, uh, moving over to that platform. That makes a lot of sense. Sorry, moving no. away. This is okay. Moving away from the big four, let me ask you, Pinterest, is there a space for Pinterest for churches on Pinterest? <laughs> um, you know, I have, um, I have an account over there. I don't, you, I don't really use it too much, but, uh, I, I think that there is, uh, there is a place for it as far as, uh, maybe you want to show the personality of, uh, your ministry and, uh, maybe showing the personality of your ministry can come forth in uh, the, the the kinds of uh, things that you curate um, on uh, that platform. You know, whatever whatever you're trying to um, whatever you're trying to show on there. Uh, maybe you are. Um, gosh, the best example I can come up with is um, I know church do sales and they do bazaars and and, and things of that or whatever. Or may, maybe um, you know you have collections. Hey, this is, you know, uh, what we have available or something like that, or, or this is, um, yeah, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm just kind of, you know, brainstorming out loud here, but that's, that's what I would do if, um, if, if, if I were using, uh, Pinterest for ministry, I would try to, uh, to try to have some kind of curated list of, uh, something that's relevant to an event that's taking place, uh, in our ministry and, and, and kind of display that thing, just basically using it as, uh, a curated example of something that you might be uh, doing uh, as a ministry. If you're doing a bake sale or, 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 or you're doing, um, you know, some kind of uh, event where you, um, where, 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 where people are coming to, you know, purchase something or people are going to, you know, look at certain things or whatever, uh, you know, maybe you can have a, a digital representation of uh, what's, what is going to look like at that event uh, on Pinterest. I, that's, that's probably the, the, the simplest thing I can come up with. <laughs> that, hey, that's fine. I think that works. I, I really like that showing your personality. I think that's something. Friendster. Friendster. I want to know what about, or, or, or MySpace. Oh, sorry. <laughs> what about Vero? Remember Vero? From Is Vero still a thing? <laughs> you know what? Oh, no. um, Vero, it, it looks like, um, it looks like it's really just a thing in, in uh, England, I guess. Is that, is that where it was? Cause everybody I've seen on there is British. So I, <laughs> Well, there you go for our international viewers. Tell us about Vero because I have no idea. Uh, Marcus, appreciate you being on on the show and interviewing and, and putting up with me and Dave. If people want to connect with you, Marcus, where can they find you online? Um, you can find me online right now. Uh, even in my uh, process of uh, transition, you can find me uh, at yourdigitalpastor.co. Uh, everything that you uh, need to know about me is going to be uh, right there on that page, yourdigitalpastor.co. And uh, also I have um, my own uh, podcast that, I, uh, th th that I'm doing uh, once a week on uh, church communications. And I'm also, um, so I, I do a one, once a week podcast, but I also do a daily uh, three minute devotional uh, every single day. And so uh, those two elements uh, are, are on that podcast. It's the Your Digital Pastor podcast. It's uh, hosted on Anchor, but um, you can, uh, it's available on um, on Apple Podcasts and Google Podcasts. So um, I invite you to uh, take a look at that as well. Awesome. Awesome. We appreciate your time and, uh, and sharing some of your insights and wisdom with us. Thanks, man. All right. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Justin. Really appreciate your time. Boy, that was some great, great stuff uh, from Marcus there. He's a, he's a wealth of information. You guys be sure to follow Marcus uh, and, uh, and keep up with what he's doing because uh, he's got a lot of insights uh, and, and a lot of good info to share. Um, by the way, guys, if y'all don't know, did, maybe you do know. I don't know if you know. If you do know and you haven't done it, how come? And if you don't know, well, hey, I'm going to tell you. Did you know that you can be an insider right here on Church Training Academy? You can go to churchtrainingacademy.com slash join uh, and click the join button there and become a part of the Church Training Academy. We have courses, training courses. We've got tutorials. We've got um, live interactions that we do. We, and we do live coaching um, with our CTA insiders. That's what we call 
our little tribe here. We call them insiders. Um, we do a live coaching call twice a month uh, with the with everybody, and basically you get to be on the hot seat and you get to pick my brain and Justin's brain, and you get to pick the group's brain, which is probably the best part about doing any of these group coaching calls. Is that you know Justin may have a great idea on something, I may have a great idea on something, you know, we may have some insights on how to solve a problem or, or get past a roadblock, but we're always amazed at how all of our insiders have insights to help each other out and stuff. And it's great when he and I can just kind of sit back and let one user help the other user. It's fantastic. So you guys will get to be a part of that twice a month uh, if you become a CTA insider. We've also got a private Facebook group, the Insiders Facebook group, where we basically do that on a continual basis. You know, someone has a problem, someone has a question, someone has an idea that they want to bounce around. Should I? Could I? Is it possible to? All that sort of stuff. It We, we handle all that in there in a private setting uh, where everybody can you know, uh, I, I get this a lot from some of our members. Well, this, this is a dumb question. So, um, you know, everybody be gentle with me. You know, and I always tell everybody it, it's only a dumb. The only dumb question is the one that you don't ask. And the reason it's a dumb question is because it's not going to get answered. So it's just going to sit there and you're a dummy for not asking it. <laughs> you know, that's the that's the thing. So in, in our insider group and much like in our in our hacks group, um, any question, anything you guys have, anything you want to know. And if Justin and I don't know the answers, okay, we'll tell you, I don't know the answer. Well, we'll go find the answer. We'll go figure it out or we'll find an expert that can, uh, we can share, uh, with you guys to help get the answer, get the problem solved, get the, get the breakthrough broken through. Anyway, go to churchtrainingacademy.com slash join and you can join today. Guys, thank y'all so much for watching. Thanks for hanging out with us. We, we, we thoroughly enjoy hanging out uh, during our live recording uh, with our uh, with our tribe, with our audience, with our fans, our friends, uh, all in the chat, both on YouTube and over on our uh, Facebook page. Uh, guys, be sure to join us every single week for the live recording of the show. We need and want our live studio audience, and that's you guys. So you guys can go to facebook.com slash church training academy, or you can go to youtube.com slash church training academy, or you can just go to... Uh, ctalive.com and watch right there and join in the other channels there as well. So anyway, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you guys take all the stuff that we've learned from Marcus today and all the, the stuff we learned in the pro tip and all that. Just take all this knowledge that you're accruing and use it to go change lives.